Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Cafe Bagheri. Today, we're going to add another cookie to our lineup. Pistachio Sable cookies of French origin have been popular all over Iran for almost 100 years. Sable is a French word that actually means sandy, which is a reference to the texture of these cookies. And you and I are going to make some pistachio sable cookies together. Okay, we're going to start our pistachio sable cookies uh, with browning the butter, which is the foundation of this recipe right here. It's a brown butter cookie recipe. I have this cooktop on medium low because we want to take care not to burn our butter. And the plan of action is to cook the butter with, oh, somewhere between one to three dried bay leaves. Like that imparts a wonderful aroma to your cookie and you decide if you want more bay leaves or less. And that's completely up to you. And you can skip it if you want. I'll put a couple of dry bay leaves in my butter. As you can see, it's already melting and I have it on medium low. And what you wanna do is keep kind of swishing the oil around like this, or you can stir it, but that's not necessary at this point. And you just look for the changing color and the smell. Those are your two signs. What you're looking for is when the milk solids that come to the surface as the butter melts, when they start changing color and, and start um, turning color to a beautiful amber, and then the nutty smell of brown butter, that will tell you that your butter is ready. And then we'll start the process of cooling it and then incorporating it into our batter. Right now, we're going to just look for that color and for the smell. I'm gonna make sure these uh, bay leaves stay submerged as much as possible. So here it is. Look, we're where we wanna be. Look at the color of the milk solids. I'm a golden to amber, and the butter itself is a little darker, um, um, it's kind of the brown butter that you would expect. And the smell is nutty and toasty, and that's where we want it. We're gonna turn off, what we have is an ice bath here, a bowl, a large bowl on an ice bath, because what we wanna do is we want to gradually um, whisk this butter and, and then get it colder than room temperature. Do make sure that you get all of the brown bits and these little dark particles. I know they look like they're burned and you don't want them, but trust me, that's a flavor essence that you want in your cookie. I'm going to fish out the bay leaves that I had in there. There you go. This is the two bay leaves. I'm gonna fish them out. All right. Look at this brown butter, it's, it smells nutty and wonderful. It's got a depth of smell and flavor already. And like I said, the brown bits are in there. I think we are slightly cooler than room temp right now. Move over here to the work table and I got a towel under it because I had it in the water. All right, we don't need the whisk anymore. We're gonna continue with an electric uh, or hand mixer from here on out. We're going to start by whisking on medium high. So not the highest speed that you can go. And we're gonna beat this butter, this brown butter until we have a, it, it, so the color changes and it lightens up and it becomes this beige color, light brown beige color. Even lighter in color. Hold on. We're going to scrape down at least once towards the end. 
There you go. Yeah. So it's got a body to it now. Okay. Okay, I believe we're where we want to be. One thing to note, see these little dark bits? Uh, first time I made these cookies, I was convinced that the butter had burned too much and especially the smell that you get initially. But, um, but don't worry about that. Don't let it boil over and don't let it burn the actual butter. But those brown bits, that will add to the character of these cookies. So next thing we're gonna add are two egg yolks here. And we're gonna add our vanilla. By the way, the recipe as usual is down in the comments. You wanna be at a lower speed for this part. Once your egg yolks are incorporated into the butter, it should be about less than a minute. We add the powdered sugar, except I need to sift. We add the powdered sugar. I would do it in, in a couple of installments. And make sure your flour, powdered sugar always is sifted when you add in it. Okay, so I'm going to mix it a little bit for about 10 seconds without turning it on. And once I have that powder incorporated a little bit, I'm gonna turn it on. Otherwise you get a plume of dust in your kitchen. And about 20 seconds in, you want to scrape down a little bit. And then we add the rest of it. We continue this with the sugar until it's fully incorporated. Of course, one more scrape down is in order for this stage. Just make sure all the dry stuff that was thrown around is pushed back in the middle so we can get more consistent mix. Get everything off of spatula. This is now well distributed. We're going to add our ground pistachios. This was the uh, third of a cup of roasted pistachios that I ground in a spice grinder. If you want to use a knife, you have to chop for a long time. But basically, by whatever means you can, you grind the pistachios to a kind of a coarse grind of your pistachios like this. We add them all here. And I have the kosher salt that I'll add. And that is the sable we're looking for. We're gonna do one more scrape down. Now we're going to add the final ingredient, which is our flour in two installments. And of course we have to sift it. And add half of it here. Again, as we always do before turning on the machine, just make sure you get as much of that fine powder from flour mixed with the previous contents of the bowl. It's still on medium to medium low. I'm going to scrape down one more time and add the rest of the flour. There you go. 
Let's add the rest of our flour. Yep, this is getting very close to the sable batter consistency that we're looking for. Go a little higher in speed. Once we get past the initial powdery stage of your flour, I'm gonna scrape down one final time. And we should be good to go. I think we're where we wanna be, look at this. So it's got this crumbly, coarse texture when you look at it, but if you grab a piece from middle of the bowl, it should stay together if you press it. This is what you're looking for. You see, this is perfect final texture for this dough. Now that we have our dough ready, we're gonna kind of squeeze and press it into a loose square, like so. I'll do that in the bowl so that I can manage it better once it comes out. There you go. So you do this, and then you kind of push it off onto a parchment paper that you have on a board or a cookie sheet, like so. So we're basically spraying this out to a loose square. And then we're going to use the help of a second parchment paper over this guy. And then use a roller to roll this out. You want it to be about a nine by nine kind of sort of square because it's really impossible to get a perfect square shape if you're doing it like this. So this recipe calls for quarter inch thickness for each cookie. You can go a little thicker if you want, play around with that and see how you like the consistency because the thinner your, your cookie dough is, the drier your cookie becomes and the texture matters. So play around with that and see which one you like better. We have spread this to the thickness we want We'll put it in the refrigerator and chill it for about 20 minutes and we'll come back and bake our cookies. All right, our dough has chilled for a little over 20 minutes. We're going to remove the top parchment and we're gonna reuse it, by the way, on our cookie sheet. Now it's time to cut <coughs> our cookies and put it on the pan for baking. You can use a little um, cutout forms, you know, heart shape. This is, by the way, what we use for our chickpea cookies, or you can just use a pizza cutter or knife to cut it however shape you want. I do the little diamond shape for my sablés, and here's what I do. So I basically cut them first in bands of about an inch to inch and a half. Check this out. So I would say this is Let's say this is the thickness that I want. Then the key is to stay consistent. There you go. Okay, now we're going to cut them at an angle to achieve our diamond shape. Same size band. get an idea what we did there. Now we're going to use a smaller spatula to remove each piece. So here's the deal. The imperfect shapes around the perimeter, you can form them, just press them into some sort of form to keep them, or you can just discard them, or collect them and then reshape them into a flat piece that you cut again. That's up to you.
This is one cookie sheet and we're going to do another one. Okay, we are ready to start baking. We have two cookie sheets worth of cookies here. We have our oven preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna bake them until they start getting kind of golden brown around the edges. I have put a shelf at the highest possible position, one at the lowest. We're gonna go about 18 minutes and halfway we're going to flip them both ways up down and front to back okay all right halfway through like i said we're going to turn them so we'll move the bottom one to the top vice versa but also turn them back and forth so this guy goes up and we turn it and we go another nine minutes or so. Took about, a, about 20 minutes to get to the color that I wanted. If you were to touch these, don't because they're very hot. They're still kind of soft and impressionable. So you have to leave them to completely cool before we start icing them, okay? While our cookies are cooling over here, we're gonna make our icing, which is a standard um, powdered sugar, vanilla, and a little bit of liquid. I use milk. So as usual, we're gonna sift our powdered sugar. Then add our liquid and the vanilla extract. Same thing I told you about the batter um, with adding rose water. You can do here, because I know in the old country, uh, both on the batter for the cookies and for the icing, the Persian touch usually includes a touch of rose water. But I don't add it and you don't have to if you don't want to. And like any other mix or batter that you make, you scrape it down a little bit before you call it done. This is our icing and it's ready to go. I'm gonna put it aside until our cookies are cool and we're gonna proceed. Our cookies have cooled. They've been sitting here for a little more than 30 minutes and they're room temperature cool. I transferred the icing that we made at the large bowl into a bowl with lower sides so we can easier dip the cookies in there. I have these crushed up pistachios. This is a couple of tablespoons worth of uh, the same roasted salted pistachio nuts. I just rough chopped them with a knife and they're ready for the final to be used for the final decoration on the cookies. So I'm gonna start by Dip in, so you pick up each cookie, and this is just like a manual process. You barely dip them in there, and you let the icing drip, and then you quickly turn it and, and set it on the same cookie sheet that they cooled on. There's gonna be a little drippage around, but don't worry about that. There you go. One more, just barely dip in there and let it drip. And then turn it around. Doesn't that look pretty? So the sugar uh, icing is gonna cool and solidify on your cookie. 
and it will be just a glossy cover, which is what we're going for. If you want it thicker, just do, just let it drip a little less. Before the icing sets, just sprinkle a few pieces of this crushed up pistachio on there. How much is up to you? You can cover the whole thing. You can put it in the center only. There, that's what we're going for. I hope you liked what you saw today. If you did, please like this video. And this is truly one of my all time favorite cookies, especially with that brown butter. I know you're gonna love this. When you make these cookies, please send me pictures at my, uh, on my Instagram account, at Cafe Bagheri. I will post a picture. I'll give you a shout out and message me and let me know how it turned out. I'd like to hear about that. Thanks again for visiting me here at Cafe Bagheri. If you have not subscribed to this channel, this is a perfect time to subscribe, please. And hit that little bell button so you can receive notifications when I post new videos or community posts. And I look forward to seeing you right here at Cafe Bagheri very, very soon. We've got some exciting items for the spring and summer season coming up. And I'll look forward to cooking with you again. Now let's try one of these cookies. I love the buttery, that's just brown butter nutty flavor of them. Mmm. <laughs> this is so good. It's unbelievable. You gotta make these.